The patrons have spoken and this week they chose Suicune. The majestic blue dog has been regaled as a fan favorite ever since its introduction as one of the three legendary dogs, question mark, in gold and silver. And since then, it stood out even more when it became the cover mascot for the third generation two game Pokemon Crystal and was one of the stars of the Pokemon Forever movie, notably defeating the evil Tyranitar and also that part where it purified the lake so Celebi could heal. It's like so much it even appears in Pokemon despite its dog-like stature not befitting the stereotypical image of a fighter. Legendary Pokemon aren't always great competitively, and Suicune's brethren Entei can attest to that. So, let's find out how good was Suicune actually. And in this video, we'll be covering these competitive formats. Suicune was quite the presence in its debut generation. In a metagame often characterized by the power of tough to break stall teams, Suicune stood out with its terrific pure water typing and absolutely massive bulk. It was able to tank a plethora of dangerous threats like Vaporeon, Tyranitar, Dragonite, Rhydon, Marowak, Nidoking, and Charizard, just to name a few. With Toxic and Rest plus Sleep Talk, it could even temporarily stall most variants of the mighty Snorlax. While with Roar alongside Toxic and Spikes, it could cause a great deal of residual damage. Its big and most obvious counters are the electric type, so Toxic easily puts them on a timer. Its great speed is another asset, tying with Needle King, which makes it nearly impossible for the latter to reliably break through it with Thunder. It also outruns Marowak, which makes it one of the few decent switch-ins for it. It even also helps in offensive matchups, where it can try to finish off a weakened Cloyster. If it's running Ice Beam, which it sometimes does so it can have a good sleep talk against Rhydon, Marowak, and Needle King, as opposed to Toxic potentially not working, then it can pull the same trick against Exeggutor. However, without Toxic or Roar, Suicune is bait for Snorlax, the Electric Types, and Vaporeon. One of its usual strengths is not completely folding to them, and being able to stay healthy with rest while remaining threatening with Sleep Talk is part of what makes Suicune so effective, though it is a tough call and dependent on its team. Usually Surf, Toxic, Rest, or Sleep Talk is the safest and strongest bet against mostly anything. However, one must be careful of the rare substitute Swords Dance Tanacruel, who turns it into setup fodder, but Roar Suicune turns the tables on that while forcing some uncomfortable spikes chip on things like Rhydon, Steelix, Marowak, and Tyranitar. Though it must watch out for being forced to rest by Sludge Bomb Poison. Suicune was notable for shaping and defining the GSC is stall era. Pairings with Raikou, often called Double Dog, are among the tier's most famous cores, notable for their ability to collectively shut down a huge portion of the metagame. The Raikou, Suicune, Skarmory, Miltek, Snorlax template, with the last slot dedicated to the Spikes game, which is usually Starmere Fortress, was the defining GSC team for a long time. Mixed Sweepers must have a lure or plan to get around or take advantage of the two dogs and this team in general or they will fail every time. All in all, Suicune is a definitive piece of GSC and an unforgiving wall that will not waver in the face of inexperienced newcomers who think they can bash their way through anything with enough hits. It has gimmicky sets such as Curse and Miracle, but the defensive standards are what makes Suicune what it is, a central force that holds stall teams together. And if you're not packing Explosion, Stab Thunder, or a seriously powerful boosting move, good luck breaking through it. And yeah, this means Suicune was OU. The infamous phrase C CM Suicune has no weak originated here. With the new Calm Mind alongside its physical defensive investment and no special weaknesses, Suicune established itself as an unkillable sweeping threat. The infamous set of Crocoon, which is a set consisting of Rest, Sleep Talk, Calm Mind, and Surf that originated from a player named Chromat, was great for turning the tables on omnipresent special walls like Blissey and potentially destroying any whirlwind attempts from Skarmory. Any advanced player can give you a horror story about instantly losing to Suicune from the lead slot or at least the opening turns of a battle. Despite the roadblocks such as Celebi, Zapdos, and being worn down by Sand and Spikes, Suicune is a terror. Hell, Roar Suicune is one of the best counters to itself, as long as the other Suicune doesn't also have Roar and is faster, or doesn't also possess the rare hidden power Grass or Electric. Suicune versus Suicune battles where neither can hurt the other can end in some pretty nasty PP stalls. Its pressure ability puts the opponent on a timer, so if you only have effectively 12 Zapdos Thunderbolts against it, they better count. And forget about Leech Seed Celebi, if that's that's your only plan for the long game. On top of this, Suicune's got several variants besides Sleep Talk, just for the calm mindsets. Defensive Roar for phasing other Suicune and various boosters such as Cursed Snorlax, Defensive Ice Beam to lock down Salamence and Flygon, Substitutes that hit 101 HP for Seismic Toss, and also to block status from Blissey and Milotic or Leech Seed from Celebi, Substitute plus Roar as a combination, Offensive 3 attacks for coverage both offensively and being able to check things defensively, and if it really wants to, it can even explore Fringe 
range options like Toxic or Reflect. And defensive sets can even also run Rest to outstall Blissey and Milotic. Suicune used to be able to go purely defensive with a Roaring Sleep Talk set. However, Sleep Talk mechanics were actually discovered to be different a few years ago. Using Sleep Talk and switching out wouldn't burn a Sleep Turn. So if Suicune used Sleep Talk as Zapdos switched in and then immediately switched, it still have two turns of Rest remaining. And thus that set died out. The infamous Crocoon is much less popular now, but it's still viable because of its ability to just stay in on things. Although it has to be much more careful about Skarmory phasing, especially since it runs special defense these days. That sets popularity in addition to Toxic plus Protect and the influx of Sand and Spikes and similar sets such as Defensive Jirachi and Zapdos being stronger than ever have really hampered Suicune as a whole. Lack of a rock resist means it is also not a safe soul counter to Tyranitar and Aerodactyl, as their rock slides do high damage and have a nasty flinch rate. However, Suicune is still a definitive advanced Pokemon, both defensively and offensively incredible if its few weaknesses are covered. It's often seen alongside Pokemon such as Claydol and Dugtrio to maximize its efficiency. And on to Gen 4, with new victims such as Heatran, Infernape, and Garchomp, Suicune boldly strolled into the new generation, standing alongside Skarm Bliss Crest as the same sweeping wall it was in the previous generation. It even abused the new Rose Raid and its toxic spikes to boost and heal as the opponent flailed at it while slowly dying. An example victim of this is Celebi on Stall Team, if you did manage to remove Tentacruel before the toxic spikes could take effect. However, its old foes were still around and new ones appeared. Breloom reared its head as a vicious threat, Stealth Rock being everywhere didn't help. Tyranitar's special defense boost meant it was even tougher to deal with. Taunt Gyarados was a major threat that abused Suicune as set up fodder, and there was no way even Suicune's bulk could tank the brutal Sword Dance Lucario. But overall, Suicune spent much of the generation doing what it did before. In the Latios era, however, a new set popped up, Offensive Suicune. Incidentally, the rise in this set is what inspired its use in advance. Sometimes things go backwards, I guess. With a set of Calm Mind, Surfer Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, Hidden Power Electric, and Maximum Special Attack and Speed Investment, Suicune traded the ability to take on Blissey to become a terrifying offensive threat, and, ironically, check things it couldn't before. Gyarados and non-Jolly Lucario weren't a problem if you were packing Suicune, and many teams' best response was to sacrifice Latias to Ice Beam, as it tricks Suicune its choice specs. However, during the post-Dragon Ban era, Pokemon that could stop Suicune Sweep and threaten it in return, such as Shaman and Dragon Dance Kingdra, became more commonplace, as well as new walls such as Clefable, Milotech, and Defensive Jirachi. But Offensive Suicune was synonymous with bulky offensive teams in DPP for a long time for a reason. Some players even began using Obama Snow to stop it, which previously thought to be a hail abusing gimmick, it showed itself to be a solid choice overall, as it completely dominated Suicune and other Pokemon like Starmie, and no grass type wanted to eat a ice stab, so it got free leech seeds to spam while wearing down things with hail. As for Suicune's options, its Roar and Sleep Talk set aped the formerly popular Rest Talk Gyarados, minus the fighting resistance, but also minus the Stealth Rock weakness. It was never hugely popular, but it was a nice choice for some stall teams. Overall, Suicune was another definitive part of the DPP OU metagame, though this time with a bit of variety that hugely affected how everything around it played and even significantly influenced the previous generation, which not every day that happened. And moving on to black and white, Ferrothorn really changed everything this generation. Suicune was one of a whole host of formerly great waters that dropped to underuse, mostly because of that durian. Drizzle gave away to special sweepers far more potent than it, sleep mechanics were ruined, and various other threats such as the electric water type Rotom Wash, Jellicent, new powerful dragons, and rain dish Tentacruel made Suicune not the most effective choice. It saw a use a few times, such as on Tailwind teams in Black and White 2, and later try and sub protect sets in rain after seeing how potent they were in the next generation, but that died out as nothing more than a minor fad. People stuck to the new Keldeo, who is pretty much the ideal offensive water. However, in underuse, it thrived, despite its old nemesis still sticking around, such as Zapdos, Raikou, Roserade, Shaman, Milotic, and also gaining another Rotom appliance counter and cut, there was no big pink blob to get in its way anymore, and it remained quite a threat, especially because it could handle the very dangerous fire types in Victini and Darmanitan reasonably well, especially if using the defensive set, as well as other Pokemon such as Flygon, although the offensive variants were preferred, since the sleep mechanics were just awful. Now before Hail was banned and underuse, Obama Snow cut down on Suicune's usage a lot, because it's naturally the best counter possible and wears Kuhn down just by existing. But now that it's gone, it's not a problem anymore, and Suicune is a solid Pokemon in underuse. And as for the VGC metagame, Suicune was a solid Pokemon in 2012. It used its Titanic bulk to support its teams well, either offering speed control with Tailwind or a potential sweeper with Calm Mind that could still control speed with Icy Wind, using Rest to shrug off Toxic and using its boost to power through Pokemon that otherwise wallet like Gastrodon. It could even use a gimmicky Rest plus Sleep Talk Sheer 
Coat set, whose recovery made it tough to kill, and with the extra PP from Sleep Talk, gave it extra chances at scoring one-hit KOs. Despite struggling with popular choices of Zapdos and Thunderous, its ability to take on other dangerous threats such as Terrakion and Garchomp, while supporting one's team's speed needs, make it worth using. We weren't able to find any placements for it this year. However, in the next year, Suicune continued to truck on similarly to the previous one, but this time it had several notable placements to show for it. It was used by both the number one and number two teams at the Houston Regionals, piloted by Benji the Great and Oliver Smith, respectively. It was also used by Steven Morioka to reach top four on the March U.S. International Challenge, Tiffany Stanley to reach 12th place at U.S. Nationals, Jacob P. to reach 7th at the U.S. Nationals in the Seniors Division, Rachel A. to take top eight at European Nationals, Edward Fan to reach 20th at the Worlds and Seniors Divisions, and it also placed four times at Worlds in the Master Division that year. Although, unfortunately, it did fall off from top 16th placements, reaching 24th, 30th, 36th, and 41st from Albert Benares, Daniel Nolan, Rachel Anand, and Wai Yin Lo, respectively. And on to Gen 6, Suicune experienced a resurgence after a generation spent in comparative obscurity. Sleep mechanics were reverted to its previous state, and without permanent sand hindering it as well, everyone got to see the full power of an unrestricted scalding Crocoon. While never a real metagame definer in the same vein as Keldeo and the Mega Charizards, it was always a solid choice for one's team, with its good old pressure stalling tactics, boosting against bulkier teams and ability to fish more safely against counters such as Ferrothorn and Amoongus. It didn't appreciate the prominence of knockoff, but it more than managed. For several years, Suicune was a quiet but dangerous threat. It was a huge part of Underuse once more, doing typical Suicune things alongside familiar faces such as Blissey and Lucario, and new ones like Hydreigon and Cobalion, but was always a threat to be accounted for in Overuse. The set that really vaulted Suicune into superstar territory was the now infamous Vincoon. Originated by Vink2612 as a way to break stall, it utilized Substitute and Protect with its decent speed to easily pressure stall its counters moves, such as Ferrothorn's Power Whips and Mega Venusaur Assault Vest Tangrowth and Amoongus's Giga Drains, which all stood no chance, while the latter couldn't even clear smog the Calm Mind boost away through sub. Rotom Wash had a very low chance of breaking the Substitute with a Volt Switch at plus one, so it couldn't dance around it that way. All kinds of teams suffered against this set's wrath, though eventually it did die out as people learned to play around it and use different Pokemon it couldn't just completely dominate. Even using techniques such as giving Rotom enough special attack to still break the sub after a calm mind, but for a while some were even calling for a suspect test. And in VGC, Suicune wasn't available in 2014, but in 2015 it returned with a vengeance. With a ton of high level placements, it began running Snarl, adding another layer of depth to its support game, and the results were in. Suicune was seriously good, being able to go toe to toe with vicious Pokemon such as Mega Kangaskhan, Aegislash, Terrakion, and Hydreigon, while generally being able to take a few hits from pretty much anything is nothing to sneeze at. It helped fight off Rain as well, and some players even use Assault Vest or Rocky Helmet to great effect. Suicune has a lot of notable placements, some including placements such as the Netherlands Regionals with Mark McQuillan placing first in the Senior Division, and some US Winter Regionals like in California with Alejandro Jimenez placing third, or David Mancuso placing second at Florida. There's also Joshua Martin placing first in Indonesia's first ever Premier Challenge, and in UK there was Philip De Sosa placing first with Suicune with Jamie Boyd placing third, and Stephen Given placing fourth. And in the Mexico City Regionals, it was also used by the first and third placing players of Miguel Lope Moreno and Luis Alfonso Trujillo. Juan Nar also used it to place first at the Colombia Regionals. Like I said, there is a lot of placements, and if you want to see more, there's a link in the description down below to all the ones we found. However, once Worlds rolled around, Suicune experienced a severe drop off from the immense usage it was enjoying prior. It was only used twice by Nikolay Kuchinrenko, who reached 22nd, and Jamie Boyd, who reached 32nd. Chen Chen Sai did reach 8th at Worlds with one in the senior division, though. And on to 2016, Suicune wasn't common in the high power Uber metagame. However, Andrew Nowak made top cut with one at Worlds, opting for a bold Citrus Berry set that ran Scald, Icy Wind, Tailwind, and Roar. In Gen 7, fueled by its Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire antics, many tried to make Suicune sets work, since it didn't gain anything new and wasn't going to be abusing Z moves anytime soon. And for a while, they did kind of work. But the new generation brought many terrific Pokemon that easily scared or walled Suicune really badly. Toxapex can take any Suicune set and haze it into infinity no matter how many boosts. Tapu Bulu, Tapu Koko, and Kartana strike fear into it. Various Z moves do way too much damage and even go through protect. Other Pokemon such as Tapu Lele and Mega Metacham still hit it way too hard. Tapu Koko and Phoenix terrains even prevent it from resting, while the latter walls it, can't be scald burned, and can harass it pretty well with taunt plus nature's madness. Burns are even 6%, so it's harder to wear things down and thus is more prone to being stalled out. Some players managed to make Suicune 
we can work on occasion, but it's not the same consistent performer anymore. Not a bad choice per se, but needs a lot of support. Plus, it faces stiff competition from other waters, mostly Greninja, but also others such as Rotom Wash and Tapu Fini. It fell to underuse, where there it's actually a tremendous choice, able to combat common Pokemon such as Infernape, Crocodile easily, and with a plethora of pursuit users like Alolan Muk, Mega Aerodactyl, and Scizor to threaten counters such as Latias and Celebi. And in VGC, in 2017, Suicune wasn't in the Alolan Pokedex and thus couldn't be used. And in the recently concluded 2018 season, it unfortunately had no notable placements. The new Tapus all threaten it in some way, and Pokemon such as Milotic take better advantage of the Intimidate laden metagame. But depending on how you feel about Bulky Waters, hopefully we'll see Suicune rise again in later metagames. And that's it! So how good was Suicune actually? For the first several generations, it was a complete menace, defining the tiers it was in. And when Power Creep that would have knocked a lesser Pokemon to NU really set in, it managed to not only help define the next highest tier with ease, it still remained viable, or even better than viable. Great, actually. In the original tier above, it is one of the original defining bulky waters, putting in all-around excellence. In VGC, its bulk and speed control options, alongside its auspicious typing, allowed it to play a terrific support role as well. So, overall, Suikin was as good as it is regal. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to Full Sweat Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And of course, as I always say, comment on what Pokemon you want to see next. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for voting for this Pokemon and for continued support of our videos. And thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms, yada, yada, yada. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.